to my sewing room. Oh, we have so many exciting things to share with you today using a lot of machine techniques. As my special guest, a little bit later on in the show, I have two ladies from the Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machine Company that will be really sharing some fun things with you. This is a perfectly elegant heirloom pillow with the Madeira applique center, the machine embroidery, which looks exactly like hand shadow work, and more machine embroidery over on the edge. Just beautiful shades of pink and blue and green, and the pillow is closed with tiny little buttons. It's just kind of a little envelope, and this machine embroidery and the, and the buttons close it. The next pillow I'm gonna share with you simply has machine embroidery in the middle, and I'll tell you a little secret. This was made from a placemat. So we're talking super simple and super easy. This lady's vest is machine embroidery done on netting, which is a really wonderful way to have a really good looking um, outfit to wear for any kind of special occasions, or for that matter, to wear on blue jeans if you'd like to. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This wonderful Madeira applique collar has tiny little machine embroidered flowers all over it, looking for the world like hand embroidery to me. This machine embroidery was done on this beautiful linen fabric. Another wonderful heirloom dress with lace shaping and once again, beautiful machine embroidery on the collar. Just one simple little turn of machine embroidery and some beautiful, beautiful French laces on this blue Swiss Batiste. Another beautiful collar, once again with lace shaping and lots of machine techniques, pin stitching, entredeau stitching, and a beautiful pale, pale colors machine embroidery, which once again moved, moved two or three inches back and it looks exactly like hand embroidery, but it was a lot faster. The wonderful Australian blouse done out of netting, which has the gorgeous machine embroidery up and down the front. It also has a pretty, just a pretty sleeve, and of course you would need a really pretty camisole. But if you have an embroidery machine, you can really just have fun making these creations and simply pressing the button and watching it go, and you can go off and wash the dishes while you sew. I think that's one of the best things to do. Maybe we won't cook, maybe we'll forget the dishes. Machine embroidery does not have to be just for children. This elegant, elegant ladies suit features machine embroidery all the way down the front, tone on tone, looking like those very expensive suits of a certain brand, which probably most of you know about, that uses tone on tone, really gorgeous machine embroidery, and they cost lots of money, like, you know, nearly $2,000. I don't have any of them, I can assure you of that. Now then, the technique which uh, Alex is going to share with you today, and Connie, is going to be one that I find on this beautiful collar. This collar has all kinds of delicate heirloom sewing, but it's machine done. It is not hand done. Here's a machine embroidery, and the technique which she's going to share with you is how to do this really beautiful machine faggoting, which looks for the world like the hand faggoting. And then right down below it is another wonderful machine technique. This is a heavy scallop with gathered lace attached after you do the heavy scallop from the sewing machine. So you see, you do not have to do handwork at all to have really, really elegant heirlooms. And now if you will come over to the boards with me, we have a very special technique for you, machine faggoting. Making delicate looking faggoting is really very easy to do on the sewing machine. I'd like to share with you the simple one, two, three steps. First, two pieces of fabric that your faggoting is going to connect right sides together and simply machine based where you're gonna have your faggoting. Next, come over here. This is a real fascinating looking uh, tool right here. This is called a hem stitching fork. Let's put the hem stitch, open up one layer, put the hem stitching fork in, that guides it, and then you're going to stitch on top of the hem stitching fork that has been encased in the fabric. Now, you might think when you look at this one, oh my, that's a little bit loopy, it has little loops down there. Well, that's exactly the way it's supposed to look because a few minutes, you're gonna see when those loops are open, it becomes a look that's just like hand faggoting. Now th on this one, which has already been open and pressed, I slipped a piece of white paper under here just so you can see real easily how pretty those stitches are that go across. That's where those little loops went to. They went to those pretty stitches. 
And then the final step on the hand faggoting, and once again, I slipped a piece of paper behind here so you can see, is to either lightning stitch or tiny zigzag all the way down one side, do the same thing along the other side, right close to the edge, and then after you've done that little zigzag or lightning stitch, you come in behind and trim away. Now that is machine faggoting. I have a very special guest today, Alex Graham Michelle, who is a Husqvarna Viking educational consultant. Alex, thank you so much for coming to the show today and welcome. Thank you, Marta. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> yeah. Today I have the technique, the faggoting technique with the hem stitch fork for you. So the first thing we do, we base the two pieces of fabric together, right side together. That's machine basting. That's machine basting. Good deal. Yeah. Okay. And then you have to set your sewing machine first. You get the tension down to almost like one. Okay. And your foot pressure down to one. Okay. Top tension to one and foot pressure, pressure to, to one. one. Okay. And your stitch length to 5.0. Okay. And you can use your A2 stitch. It's a straight stitch. A straight stitch. It's a straight stitch. stitch. That's that simple. It's very simple. <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, for this technique, I'm going to use the D foot, which is also the blind hem foot. A blind hem foot. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a the, special thing yeah, about that? The reason foot? that I'm using this, this foot is because it has a groove. And as you a can see. A groove on the bottom. On the okay. bottom. And the groove will write right on the left side of the fork. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it. You slip your fork right in between, and you want the loop toward the red side. Okay. And you slip it right under your foot and making sure that the needle is right in the center of your, of your fork between the tines. Okay. <laughs> it might be a little bad if the needle were right on the fork. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Just right in between the yeah. tongs of okay. the fork. Okay. And you go ahead. Well, what I usually do, I try to work it with my hand first, you know, to make sure it's there. Okay. And then I start sewing. Just right in between the grooves, That's and it looks like that hem stitching fork just got That's all it. that. Oh, that is so easy. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And the hem stitching fork guides it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It also holds it apart so it you holds can get that apart. beautiful stitch. And if you have a long strip that you're doing, you just stop, and then you just pull, you, you can lift your pressure foot, or your foot, and then you okay. just pull your fork down, and you keep sewing. I see. Okay. Now, once you're done with that, and this is what we did here. It's all done. It's loopy, but you don't have to worry about that. And you go to your ironing board, you open it, and you press it down. And then I have, then I have the fagoting. You have the fagoting. And then now to keep it still, what I do, I use the lightning stitch, which is A6 on my machine. And of course, I would use a, mach a matching thread with that. Okay. You know. And you just go right on the side, on each side of your fagoting. And then with your scissors, you can just take it and you trim it very close to the stitching. And if you don't have that little lightning stitch, you can just use a zigzag. The zigzag, a very right? close zigzag. Oh, Alex, that is absolutely yeah. fascinating. And I just love this beautiful yellow blouse you have brought too, which has the uh, wonderful uh, machine embroidery in the middle and tiny little flowers scattered around. Yeah. But as you can see, now I see you've done two Widths of yes, fagoting there, yeah, and you used a beautiful gold uh, thread for the yes, fagoting. I used the twist, the bottom old twist, and it's a silk thread. A silk thread it's is what you used, yes. a and twist. it's a heavier, heavier uh, weight than the regular sewing thread. Oh, yeah. Alex, this is absolutely beautiful. And you know what? I love the way you just scatter the little flowers in between the yes, fagoting. That's too. what I did with the customizer. You know, I just picked the all customizer. The you just picked a little yes, flower and put it anywhere you wanted to. Mm -hmm. You see how elegant and tailored this blouse is. I think that's what a lot of people are really looking for, is very, very beautiful tailored clothes. And it is. Alex, thank you so very much for being okay, on the show with me today. It was a pleasure, Marta. <laughs> and next, I have a home decorating project for you, brought to you by another one of our Husqvarna Viking educators.
I'm so happy to have also as my guest today, my friend Connie Palmer. Connie is a Husqvarna Viking freelance educator. Connie, welcome to the show. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me. It's a pleasure. You know what? This is the sweetest little doorknob <laughs> sconce that you have. I thought I'd just like to show it to our viewers first. There is a, by the way, we have little candies in here. This this is kind of go on a bedroom uh, door and, and little candy or a little potpourri or whatever right, can go friend. in here. The wonderful um, machine embroidery and then the beautiful fagoting. Connie, I just love that. The fagoting down here, the fagoting on the side. You know what else I really love? Are those unbelievably pretty scallops on the right. bottom. And it's just one layer of the linen and then the organdy. Connie, right. show us and how we make. It really is it wonderful. Is, and it's an easy project. Um, you can do it from the scraps that you have uh, uh, made your blouse. See, For, so you, you, know, you don't even have to buy anything else. These are just little leftover oh, pieces. Oh, yeah. fun. I right, like so that. <laughs> and the first thing we have to do is machine embroider our um, embroidery. Okay. That's our first step. Is that on organdy? You've this used is there? on organdy, and then we have a washaway stabilizer okay. underneath. Okay. And I've used uh, one of the embroidery cards for my machine. Before I take this out of the hoop, one of the unique features of this machine is that we can embroider the scallop at the top, the beautiful little scallop that's right here at the top. Let me move While this it's still the in the way. machine. While it's still in the machine. Well, now you that's very to, convenient. Oh, it's it is very it. convenient. See right here. You just program that in after you use right. your little built-in and design. Exactly. Oh, and I then love and, that. right. I love then it. you take it out of the hoop and trim the scallop. So that part is ready. Okay. Very simple. <laughs> Our next step is to fold down the top of a seven and a half inch square. That's the back, I guess. Right, this is the very back. Just do a decorative stitch across the top right here. Have you used like a wing needle entre uh, or something? You could, you could use anything you choose, anything that you like. Including a scallop? A scallop. Or straight <laughs> stitch. <laughs> right, straight stitch. Whatever you uh, really like on your machine, that would be your okay. best bet. Then you just layer these two pieces together. See how pretty? Perfect. Now, you would baste both of the layers together, just baste all the way around. Now that's machine based. That's machine we're basing. About, just Connie. regular base. I know machine you're basing, a big right? machine person, <laughs> like I machine am. Machine base. Don't hand base. Though. <laughs> okay. Now, now it's ready for the fagoting, and I'm not going to fagot do any of the fagoting today because Alex already did that, so we're not going to go through that. But you would lay your pieces. You okay. would do both sides. Do this side, then do this side and then do across the bottom with this wonderful hem stitch tool. All right, that's like, what Like Alex just shows just, how to Just do. exactly like Alex okay. shows, it's quick okay. as that. And then it will look just like this. There's the fagoting okay. down both sides and across the bottom. So here's our scallop, there's our decorative stitch. Then you would top stitch, once this is pressed back after, you've, after you do the hem stitching, you would top stitch across here. Or do the lightning stitch. Really, it's better with the lightning stitch. Uh, Alex has turned me on to the lightning stitch for this. And then you can trim, excuse me, you can trim all of this away. That's what gives you the little bag, see? All right. All right, then the last thing that we have to do is the scallop around the edge. If you'll hand me that little bag, I'll show you. We've okay. just done a pretty scallop around the edge. See right here. Just lay that one down. I guess a little stabilizer. Right, right. little stabilizer, and we're gonna. And that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the scallop. Okay. Okay. It's so simple yeah, to do. Yeah, it is. It's, it's such very a wonderful easy. gift it's item quick. too. All right, we're just gonna put a little piece of uh, stabilizer that'll tear away very quickly. I'm gonna use one of my scallops from my sewing machine, and we put a darker color thread in here, so it's not gonna be. The same, it's not matching now. <laughs> well, that's okay. Just so that, that there, everybody our, can our see how can pretty see the scallop right. is a little bit better. And we're going to start right up here at the top where you started your uh, hem stitching. Okay. And we're going to taper out to about one inch from the hem stitching. Okay. So one of the unique features of this machine is the stop button. Do you know about the stop button? I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> the stop button will finish out a pattern and then stop. So, so that you have it, a perfect right, turn. So you have a perfect turn. <laughs> it does not get any easier, does it? No, not really. Okay, we're going to start right here. And I've already touched just a one touch, and I can get my scallop. And I'm going to start right here. And I know, because I have already done the project, that about three scallops. About three scallops. Right. <laughs> 
We'll carry us to the corner. I got you. All right. I'm going to push the stop button. Which finishes that whole See? pattern just and perfectly. Stops. Okay. And then you'll turn. And also you would want to put your needle down on. Then turn. And you can take stop off because if you don't, it'll stop again after the next. That'll be the slowest scallops right. in the world if right. you don't right. take the scallop and off. And ask me how I know that one. <laughs> right. Honey, I think I learned <laughs> right, right. by doing every right. mistake right. there is to exactly. make. Exactly. So oh, how just, pretty. I'm not going to keep going, but so you would just continue and you would pivot on this corner, pivot on this corner. And, and make this right, absolutely right. adorable little project. Take See a small here how the, the scallops come off at an angle. I really like the yes. way you finish that mm -hmm. off. So easy mm -hmm. to do. Pretty. We have another adorable little uh, pouch, to, a little sconce to hang on the doorknob that you can also put little candies or a little right. potpourri or right. whatever in. And then this magnificent blouse oh, that Alex had Alex. made to show us is absolutely beautiful with the all kinds of treats. Now the faggoting runs right down the side here. Alex has done her machine embroidery on netting and she has put organdy behind it so you can still see through the netting, right. but yet it gives it a little bit of stability. What an absolutely beautiful and very elegant blouse. And once again, the faggoting is over running down both sides of the sleeve with this elegant machine embroidery. It's a Connie, it's such an elegant blouse and so many people are wanting to sew more for themselves. Right. Right. And I think that a lot of us really love tailored That's clothes. Right. Connie, thank you so much well, for being here. Thank you for having here. me. All thank right. you for having me. And next, we have an elegant Entredo New Zealand blouse for you. This New Zealand blouse has so many features that I really think you'll like. By the way, this is the uh, pattern for this series and the sizes come in size 6 to size 28. This blouse is absolutely magnificent. The, the trim, the grid work across the front is done with wing needle entredeau. As you can see, we've used tatting and entredeau at the neckline. I've used two strips of tatting insertion on either side of the grid work. And this is just a wonderful tone on tone feather stitch machine, of course. I think you'll really like the effect of this grid work done with the wing needle entredeau. It's very, very tailored and very beautiful. You know, the sleeves of this blouse have been so popular. They're so beautiful with just the, the pleats. Let me show you. The, the sleeves are pleated rather than gathered on this round yoke. And I love the treatment on the sleeve with the grid work of the wing needle entredeau, the tatting on both sides, and the sleeve at the bottom is also very pretty with entredeau and tatting at the bottom. Now then, let's see how easy it is to do this wing needle grid work. First of all, you're going to uh, just simply draw the grids on your uh, fabric and then do wing needle entredeau down one side of the grids and the other side. Now I've got to get some tatting on there, but before I put some tatting on, I think I'm just going to share with you how easy it is to do this wing needle entredeau with the grid work. It's real interesting to watch entredeau stitching. I'm going to slow down a little bit just so you can watch. You see it pulls the fabric back and forth and it goes back into the same hole. The real secret to stitching beautiful machine wing needle entredeau is to let the machine do the work. Do not pull it, do not push it, do not help it in any way. Simply keep your fingers in the front. The only purpose your fingers are going to serve is simply just to guide the work as you have the fun of stitching along these grids for the beautiful wing needle entredeau. And then you just go down one side and down the other side. Now, we have a really interesting technique called extra stable attaching of the insertion. First of all, I'm going to move my insertion in, get it placed. Then I'm going to straight stitch that insertion down. Then I'm going to fold back and press so my insertion is kind of exposed there. The next step is to come in and zigzag along that line, thus attaching, zigzagging the back, which what you folded back, and the front. That gives it an extra stable lace finish. Now, after you zigzag it, then you simply trim it away, and that gives you the extra stable lace finish. One more final little trick here to stitch the feather stitching in the middle. I'm going to put a tearaway stabilizer behind there. I always use a tearaway stabilizer when I do decorative stitching. And then I will stitch the feather stitch down the middle. Now then, I have a beautiful quilt square and technique for you.
This is my all-time favorite quilt we've ever had on Martha's Sewing Room, and this square is the one I'd like to share with you today. This has a lace-shaped heart out of antique lace. Feather stitching and double needle pin tucks are put inside the heart, a technique I'm going to share with you how to do, and wing needle entredeau, or I'll say uh, baby daisy wing needle entredeau, was used to attach the gathered lace to the outside of the heart. Come on over here with me to the sewing machine and let me share with you how to shape that heart, how to put the extra piece in the middle, and then how to attach the gathered lace. First of all, shaping the lace-shaped heart is very easy to do. I'm gonna put the pins on the outside, pin at the top, on the miter, pin at the bottom, fold it back on itself, remove the top pin, put it through both layers and come around. A lot of you probably remember, and I have a little heart trouble over here, so how do I make that heart lay down? Well, I'm going to go underneath here. I'm going to pull a string, and you will see, just like magic, the heart lays down. Now then, here I've got it all shaped. I'm going to chop off the tails. And the next technique I would like to share with you is I'm going to make an extra piece of fabric to go in behind this heart. So I'm going to come in here and cut away the inside of the heart. I'm going to put this square behind there, and here I have done that for you. The lace-shaped heart, I have put the square behind it, and I'm going to wing needle entredeau, zigzag, or pin stitch in the middle. And then the last step I have to do is to attach the gathered lace to the outside of the heart. Okay, I'm using an edge joining foot, and you can see I've already done some of the wing needle entredeau, except I'm using a baby daisy entredeau. All right, here we go. Now I'm going to use my shish kebab stick because I'm going to go real slowly here. Do the entredeau stitch so straight as long as you can and remember to let the machine do all of the work. Do not help it. Now I may need to move over just a little bit. I might need to even move my presser foot just a little bit. All right, I'm going to wing needle entredeau and uh, uh, pushing these little gathers up to be sure that the gathers are as evenly distributed as possible. But don't worry about it if they're not totally evenly distributed because they won't be anyway. <laughs> whether you do it by hand or whether you do it by machine, it's all right not to have them quite even. Now, if it bunches up a little bit on you, I should have had my needle in needle down position. Just pick up the presser foot, move your gathers out a little bit, Lower the presser foot and just go right on. There is no problem whatsoever. Notice I'm using my little wooden shish kebab stick to keep the lace as even as possible and, and to pull it in when I need to pull it in. And that's all there is to attaching gathered lace edging on a curve to a lace shape using a beautiful, beautiful wing needle stitch. And now then, I would like to invite you to come along to my attic with me. This beautiful little baby day gown, and some people might call it a christening dress, but I think this was just a baby day gown, was made probably around 1900. Let me tell you why I judge it to be at, le at least that late. Because the little neckline is a higher neckline. It does not have a drawstring. There's a little bit of gathered lace around the neckline, some purchase trim that was not hand done. That was a trim of some kind they purchased. The beautiful insertions coming down into a V, and these hand-stitched folded release tucks and the little dress just comes all the way down to a very simple, it's really an A-line dress. It has a very simple skirt. All the laces have been hand rolled and whipped, hand rolled and whipped. And you know we've been studying machine faggoting on this show. This is a hand hem stitching, which looks a good bit like the wing needlework that we can now do on the sewing machines. Aren't we glad that we have sewing machines to do this wing needlework now rather than having to do it all by hand? The back of this little dress is really, really sweet too, very similar to the front with the little release tucks and it's closed with four little buttons. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I hope you've had fun because I certainly have and I'd like to invite you to come back next time.